What I love about Anchor is that it's given me creative control of my own material. I was approached by a big company to do a podcast about the art world and I didn't want to sign over all rights to them. Uh, Anchor has allowed me to make this podcast and to keep creative control as well as financial control in terms of advertising. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place for free. You can use it on your phone or your computer. There are tools that help you to upload your recordings uh, that you've done separately or on the app. They'll distribute it for you as well, which again, you know, I couldn't wrap my mind around distribution and they have it all there for you in one place, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and many more. Uh, you can easily make money from it as well. Uh, they help you advertise, as you can see right now, I'm getting my first ad out through Anchor. And all you have to do is download the app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good luck with your podcast and getting your voice out there and owning your content. Welcome back to another episode of the Bees and Honey podcast. Today we'll be speaking with Armenian artist Arshak Sarkisian. I've known Ar Arshak for quite a number of years and we've had the good luck of being in the same city at the same time. Uh, sometimes we arranged that in advance, other times it was just serendipitous, but he's exhibited his work all around the world. Um, in LA, in London, uh, all throughout uh, Europe, and also Russia. Um, he has amazing uh, studio visits at his studio in Yerevan. I think uh, two summers ago he was uh, visited by the legendary Armenian art dealer Tony Shafrazi. And Tony, as you might know in the art world, has many great friends who are collectors and contacts, so I believe uh, some publishers were at the studio as well and you know he manages to have a very strong art practice in a place that's not necessarily on the commercial art circuit so i hope you enjoy this conversation with arshak and uh, please uh, enjoy thank you hi arshak hi. How are you doing? Very well, very good. At my studio. <laughs> yes, you know, mm -hmm. totally locked and working. Do you locked hear me? Down, locked in. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I hear you very well. Yes. Yes, great. So tell us how it's going in Yerevan. Yes, in Yerevan, in my studio. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very nice, but it's very rainy days. So, mm -hmm. um, there is no sun these uh, few days, but it's nice. It's very, uh, <laughs> remind me of London very much. <laughs> right. Well, you know, they say April showers, April showers bring May flowers. So normally it's raining in April and then in May we have some flowers. Yes, yes, yes. yes that's right. So tell me. Uh, mm hmm Tell me uh, a little bit about your history as an artist. Tell me how you started, how did you grow up, about your mother, your dad's influence on your growth as an artist. Yes. Well, yes, I, obviously I, I grew up in an artist family and my father was an artist and he is an artist now and working and... Um, now and uh, my mother was an actress she was an actress uh, and uh, you know I growing up in a family where I was surrounded by art and artists and uh, uh, my parents friends was an artist mm -hmm. and uh, it was always all about art and uh, as, you know since I was a young man I was drawing and painting and mm -hmm. sculpting you know, um, it just like a, you know, a normal child. You know, when you do, when you're a kid, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you, you play with clay and uh, you want to draw. But uh, it was mm -hmm. it was lots of uh, you know nice, um, beautiful 
atmosphere i was you know i was surrounded by uh, art all the time and uh, yes uh, it sounds like a, a great childhood yes yes <laughs> yes very much yes i think so yes i'm lucky hi again so, arshak how are you doing hi nicolete sorry uh, the, i think yes, uh, cut off. it's all right let's start from the beginning and we will uh, just because it was just a little bit we spoke and sometimes the connection is not so good. I'm figuring yes. out how to use this new app. So let's see. <laughs> uh, last time it worked well. So I'll try again. So tell me a little bit about your history as an artist. How did you start? How you grew up? Uh, your mom and dad, their influence on your life as an artist? Yes. Uh, I, uh, I grew up in a in Armenia, you know, in uh, Yerevan, where um, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful small city, and um, we we have a great city. We're surrounded by you know small local mountains. It's in Kovkaz area, we say, which is a very mm -hmm. brutalistic place, but um, very small community. About uh, you know two million people living in a you know in a capital city of Yerevan. So mm -hmm. and. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, to be you know artist in Armenia, in uh, it's um I don't know how in which stereotype I can put me in and say, but uh, you know it's amazing because uh, when Soviet uh, we were under Soviet control for many many years when we become independent mm -hmm. in 1991, and mm -hmm. uh, Armenia become. A, independent country and so many artists mm -hmm. uh, from my father generation they become a post uh, soviet artist and uh, right. they will become they become very bunch of group of wonderful artists become very interesting for the world and they went to documenta they went uh, they had uh, many great exhibitions in, in new york in berlin and uh, so i will, i was lucky to be is surrounded by these old, uh, you know, uh, events and all this history and the uh, biograph of those people. So I, I was surrounded by and studying a lot of uh, from these artists we had here and we we do, we still have uh, many of them working. But uh, then I I was lucky to have my own studio since I was very young. And uh, I start to paint uh, every day, uh, you know, in a normal uh, going my studio from the morning till night. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's become very uh, usual because I've seen it since my father was doing uh, all his lifetime. And um, mm -hmm. so it was, we were growing up in a building where we say artist building. It was built by Soviet uh, time. <laughs> It was a hundred studio and my father's studio was there. Uh, one of those hundred mm -hmm. and my studio was there. So I was, um, it was amazing time. Uh, at 2000 to, uh, in uh, 2010, it was amazing time for Armenia. Mm -hmm. It was lots of this, this uh, discovery for Armenian artists, internationally exotic artists uh, in Armenia. Wow. Yes. So, uh, well, I don't know. Before you, I never really uh, met any Armenian artists. I mean, I knew two Armenian art dealers, but yes. I, I never knew any of the artists. And uh, well, anyway, go ahead. Tell me what else was going on then. Would you say growing up in Armenia gave you the opportunity to be yourself, I guess, because of your dad and that whole circle around you? Yes, yes. I heard it's a very creative place. Yes, very much. Yes. You know, it's very calm. It's very in a matter of uh, your your day schedule and uh, the way you can organize your day here. It's um, you know very minimal. You can't do much here. There is not much to do. It's not like New York or Paris or London. It's so much exciting, you know, excitement. Uh, not not like that mm -hmm. at all. It's uh, you know in uh, intensely. I mean, you you become concentrated here. By doing nothing, you just, you know, uh, you all already concentrated because of this uh, minimal and, you know, very stable life. But, um, you know, and um, this, this was the, 
maybe works for me well for many years and uh, being in a studio mm-hmm. and working and uh, spending a lot of time uh, and uh, trying to make uh, something out of you know uh, uh, this in the end of the day from my studio but um, you know it's a it's long it's it's just a creative process normal creative process i i think so it's uh it's, it works for me well being in yerevan um, yes yeah. and then from time to time you go out and do an exhibition somewhere exciting and you fill up on that and then you go back to the studio again quiet and contemplative like a monk <laughs> yes, 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 very much like a monk, exactly. This is, uh, it's, you know, I think uh, particularly uh, time of your life, you have to, you know, if you, if not, I guess if you're an artist, you, you have to be in a studio. I mean, it's the only way uh, mm-hmm. to be productive and to create, um, I mean, being an as uh, being a figurative painter, or I, I called myself a painter. Um, I mean, uh, in this mm-hmm. way, but then, you know, maybe, I mean, of course, maybe uh, in particular time of your life, you need distractions and you need to be out and because maybe you have uh, enough uh, self-balance and you have a uh, knowledge of uh, building up um, something, you know, you, you can be everywhere, mm-hmm. your studio can be everywhere. You can create in a, outside in a park everywhere, but you you must have this base. You must have a, you know mm-hmm. a amount of uh, you know this. Uh, there is so much to know and uh, uh, to be. I mean, it's it's new and ended. Uh, uh, art is just uh, you know you don't know you work uh, and you don't know you know something or you don't know <laughs> maybe better not to know or maybe I don't know just uh, absurd sometimes right so it's very relative relative question but yes yes generally yes, yes it's it is so Well, tell me about the scene in uh, Yerevan, uh, the museums, the galleries, the communities, I mean, the cafes. I know you have yes. some Armenian artist friends you hang out with from time to time. What goes on there? You have dinners at each other's yes. house or how does Especially it work, in summers, the cultural uh, scene? summertime, Yerevan become uh, very active because, you know, we have, as you know, we have so many diaspora Armenians uh, coming uh, you know back to Yerevan for for a short time visit Yerevan and those Armenians are a lot there are about 8 million in the world and uh, so many of Armenians they want to you know uh, travel back mm-hmm. to Yerevan to see the motherland and in this reason uh, Yerevan has an incredible mm-hmm. incredible uh, weather in summer and everyone wants to be outside and uh, there's lots of cafes. Yerevan is very known by his cafes, outside cafes. And uh, everyone is just, you know, want to be outside at the summer. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it seems like very happy, very uh, positive city, and uh, where you can meet a bunch of new people all the time. And uh, you know, uh, but gallery, I mean. Um, we don't have much galleries here, and the, because uh, of the small city and small community, mm-hmm. you know, we have a national museum, we have a few great museums, but um, mm-hmm. unfortunately, art scene here is, uh, you know, it's not uh, so so active. I guess uh, because there is no interest, you know, there is not many people understand about painting here, or you know. You know, what they know is uh, about, they say it's beautiful, it is ugly, you know. They, they don't really study much. They don't want to know much because, uh, you know, when you're in New York or in a big city, automatically, you know, you, you learn things. And mm-hmm. uh, But here, they don't have the stereotype of the um, something that they can compare with. And uh, I guess this is my opinion, but we have amazing street museum. Like we have this famous Italian sculptors, very known and very uh, big, big sculptures outside uh, in mm-hmm. the street where people, you know, get know these names. And I mean, mm-hmm. it's a, 
you know, we, we're going to have, uh, hopefully, the first Armenian Biennale here, Yerevan Biennale, mm -hmm. which will happen, I don't know if this corresponded because of everything. Right. Um, yes, but it's going to happen, I think. And uh, we have Italian curator, and we have an incredible, interesting team. I think after this, Armenia will be more on the, map. the center, right? On the map of the well, art world. And and what happened there last September? You sent me this uh, invite for a big uh, conference-like thing with art last September. You remember? A conference a big, in Yerevan. In Yerevan, yeah. A bunch of people were coming for exhibitions and stuff like that last September. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What it was a it was a. It, Big art fair mm -hmm. and international art fair, I mean, was uh, in Yerevan, mm -hmm. and many galleries, you know, from all over the world, mm -hmm. and they were, um, they had a small space in this huge building, and um, there's a all Armenian galleries and uh, local and uh, neighborhoods like Georgia, and I mean, it was amazing. Uh, amazing uh, art fair and this year actually they were preparing to do us uh, and uh, I heard uh, of you know good galleries from London they were coming over here for this art fair but in September again but uh, again uh, I mean because of this uh, coronavirus. coronavirus everything mm -hmm. is just uh, you know stoned uh, yes yeah. so what are you currently working on in your studio uh, at the moment, I work. Uh, I do. I do one big painting, finishing one big big painting. I mean, and another one small one, and uh, and sculpture. Also, I do sculpture. So mm -hmm. I work on one sculpture that I thought is finished, but uh, you know, finally, I want to uh, rebuild from the sculpture. Mm -hmm. Something else. So I'm working for more than three, three uh, paint, two painting, one sculpture, and and also I work for middle of finishing one drawing. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep myself creative in these and, day, days. <laughs> and th and this was stuff that was uh, supposed to be in the exhibition in Rome in May. Uh, with uh, regarding the Rome uh, in May. Um, is everything is ready? And the list of the work is ready, and mm -hmm. it's different. No, it's different work. It's different work. Okay. Yeah, they are packed, uh, ready to be shipped. Mm -hmm. But uh, but because of again this uh, mm -hmm. pandemic, pandemic, uh, we we don't know. But my I, my exhibition, my first exhibition, mm -hmm. which going to happen in Rome, in the Museum of Baroque. Mm -hmm. uh, known as Palazzo Chigi, mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's will uh, I I believe it will be June or July. We don't know yet because of uh, we don't know. I mean, all events as mm -hmm. and they expands as my one. So, but uh, it's it's on the track. So it's, that's uh, good. Yes, I hope uh, that will happen. And how do you see the art world in general? Uh, I think I know how it's affecting you in the short term, but how do you think it will affect the art world in general in the future? Did you think about that at all? Uh, the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. yeah. Yes. Or anything, yeah. how, how anything will change after all of this lockdown, not even the virus, yeah. but just the whole lockdown. Yes, I think um, uh, it's it's a, this is very serious um, issue. You know, I mean, I I am you know when uh, when you see yourself as the world are uh, paralyzed, mm -hmm. and, you know, as a one body, it's a you know one mind, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's a, I mean it's a horrible, it's very bizarre, horrible situation, but. Uh, if you look from the other side, it's everyone is doing a one, one uh, thing. You know, they stay at home, and uh, they think they all think about one issue, mm -hmm. and they all um, uh, are in a one uh, 
you know drama you know one uh, uh beat um, yes one sh- plot one part yeah yes and the uh, yeah. world is one body and mm-hmm. uh, at the moment it's just a very unique very unusual very unique uh, situation for the world and i think uh you know many people will just you know pass this and uh, maybe in the future as something uh, what they will remember but as unfortunately many people will uh, suffer and will they will um, you know uh, take this uh, pain with them mm-hmm. after uh, coronavirus in mm-hmm. matter of uh, financial mm-hmm. and uh, physical and mental mm-hmm. but I mean um, you know artists are uh, they are Relatively, I mean, they are more lucky because they have to be at studio and create. Mm-hmm. At uh, being an as a real artist, you know that you don't you don't paint for money, mm-hmm. and you paint because you want to paint and you have something to do, mm-hmm. and uh, you do it, and uh, and then the rest will come. But um, the people are doing business, and of course, um, they they're going to have a difficult times but I, I always think if there is a big light if there is a big shade uh, there is a big light somewhere yeah and, uh, yes that's I think, a good point yes i think um uh, you know many this is a good lesson i think for it's a very powerful lesson very painful lesson for mm-hmm. the world mm-hmm. and um but i don't know why for reason but it's it's a disaster of course but um, I already heard so many friends of mine living in Europe on how they are um, suffering from this and uh, they all, uh, you know, there's a panic and uh, many artists, uh, I see this in Instagram, they do art regarding this coronavirus, which I don't like, I don't understand why they do something in these days uh, regarding coronavirus, <laughs> which is for me very stupid. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, very primitive, and uh, which I hate this primitiveness of uh, social network, mm-hmm. which sarcasm, sometimes you don't know if the sarcasm is real, you know, if you, you know, it is not that sarcasm that you would hear from the Jung or, you know, from Sigmund Freud, but mm-hmm. it's just uh, something stupid. I don't know. I'm just very disappointed from this social media. Well, yeah. And I think um, this is will make worse if people will, uh, you know, study. And, I mean, they will keep eye on the time, this social network. It's just too much negativity. and But maybe this will influence badly for art. Yes, that, that, yes. that's a good point. Yes. I mean, I, you know, I really believe, and this is why I don't like the idea of that creation, creation or whatever you said about people making this coronavirus art. I really believe the creative process shapes our reality. All our thoughts, all our actions, all our paintings, all our movies, all our books. That's why it's really important what we're creating, because we literally yes. are making it. Yes. Yes, anyway. it's true. It's very true. Yes. And I mean, we'll see, we'll see, we'll just, I guess we don't know what's, how it's going to end, but mm-hmm. I hope, we all hope this will end soon and everyone will come back in a normal life again. Yes. Well, whatever normal yes. means at that time. <laughs> and uh, t- yes. Right. Well, <laughs> well, tell me about the um, Venice Biennale. I know your dad was there a few years ago. Uh, represented yes. in a pavilion, and yes. do you do you think you will have some opportunity in the future to have your work there as well? I don't know how it works in terms of the political spectrum yes. of art curation in Yerevan, but what do you think? Yes, actually, yes, my father is is, is right. My father was uh, yeah, exhibiting. I mean, you know, was in uh, representing Armenia in uh, 2013. I think in 55th of the Biennale. Mm-hmm. In Venice, in his work was, you know, viewed at the uh, Saint Lazar, and mm-hmm. uh, maybe a few different direction, uh, location in Venice. It was, mm-hmm. uh, I think, uh, yes, that was a wonderful. He had that, ex- you know, he, he was part of the Venice Biennale. Uh, myself, 
we we were trying um, last year i mean you know year before about um, uh, putting uh, my work in a biennale with creators and unfortunately we had a i mean maybe fortunately i don't know but we had a big political changes in armenia we will say you know we say we become democratic country now we have the new government and uh, new leader mm -hmm. and uh, because of this uh, at that time the government uh, send a group of artists were working for the um, political uh, view they had the, the political works and uh, regarding this our um, big uh, uh, re revolution mm -hmm. what they called they did here uh, revolution mm -hmm. so this was a view at, at the venice biennale which was absolutely propaganda for from the Armenian government, right? In, in my uh, opinion, mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, I don't judge, but I mean, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. And um, so, our uh, work here was uh, felt. Yeah. No, but but we, I I work with the Italian creator. Um, uh, she's Italian French creator, Dominique Laurent, and mm -hmm. we. We work together with another Italian creator, so we're trying. We'll see if uh, this will work. Um, and because uh, last year I went to the Quarta Biennale, uh, maybe you remember in Praga, it was uh, Quarta Biennale. It was a Biennale for the costumes, uh, for the sculpt, three-dimensional sculptures. It was a. It's a. You know, in Prague. Mm -hmm. Prague. So I was uh, participating and uh, presenting uh, Armenia. Uh, and, uh, yes, this was very interesting for me. And uh, maybe, uh, yes, something similar, which I was, I had at the time in Prague, uh, my works, and maybe similar. Uh, the style relations. of presentation, right? Yeah, it's a sculpture, three-dimensional sculpture. There is a, it's a moving sculpture, huge, made from the textile mm -hmm. and um, um, yeah it's something like uh, I will call them uh, monsters <laughs> yes. yeah well uh, that's what I like I mean a lot of your work is uh, quite fantastical and uh, the combination of the human with the animal I mean it goes back I think way back in our history as uh, creative uh, beings that we had this uh, combination of iconography and in yes. our art and in our religion you know yes, in, in our yeah mythology maybe very much and um, yes it starts from you know greek uh, greeks they used to say the mask in greek uh, means uh, persona you know personality mm -hmm. and it's very interesting in these days that uh, thinking about mask mm -hmm. which means persona mm -hmm. well yes it is a routines are uh, few coming from the you know ancient times and which I'm I study a lot but at the same time what I do is it's about contemporary men about I always think that the monster is the definition of the human being mm -hmm. and uh, I you know I call some people monster and they get very mad and very sad <laughs> I said why are you so sad I'm complimenting you monster is a, such a wonderful thing <laughs> <laughs> you know I think <laughs> I, I think if you look at it from just a purely Western uh, standpoint, then people think the monster is a scary thing, something from their childhood or something. Yes, but, yes. But I agree with you. in the East, some of the monsters that appear in the art, the scary ones, are the benevolent ones. Yes. Right? And they're scary to keep the evil away. Yes, yes. Very interesting. But also, I, I think about the... You know, the, the, the person, the human being can be, you know, when you see a naked person, as creative painters, they paint uh, bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for me is a wonderful, you know, I mean, as a genius painter forever, it's uh, Lucien Freud who was painting mm -hmm. the body as mm -hmm. the monster at the skin of the body was, uh, you know, it's like elephant skin. Mm -hmm. But you don't know, you say, I mean, it's beautiful or ugly, but it's just a monster. It's a... Uh, another dimension of the beauty maybe the form of the body mm -hmm. and um, relatively what i think about i think about the person with the dress, mm -hmm. the dress i make the dress uh build the in life 
Mm-hmm. And um, this is uh, maybe thing that, you know, I think about a lot, uh, you know, all the time to make it more real, to make it more uh, something that in life, or, uh, you know, it's you don't see uh, usual, you, you can't see it as because it's, um, you know, maybe a time and uh, this personality, the biography of that person will make him himself as uh, he is uh, at the moment because of this uh, past uh, makes him uh, his uh, life makes him uh, strong or beautiful or colorful or scary mm-hmm. there's a myth, myth there is something you can't explain right yeah so it's something like that all right. Well, I left the last question to be something personal. I don't know if there's something more you want to add uh, before we end. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else you wanted to say that I didn't uh, bring up? Uh, no, I think, yeah, we're a wonderful conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I will let you know when this episode will air. And, you know, we should have these conversations more, not just for the podcast. We can check on each other every now and again. Yes, with pleasure, Nicole. Yeah. You know, I'm, it's always a pleasure to hear you. Great. I, well, I, I always I miss these intellectual conversations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we have to, we have to, we have to, um, we have to check the time zones and uh, coordinate. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's very, yes, very true. Anyways, well, hopefully, see you soon in Italy uh, for your exhibition. Uh, hopefully, this summer, yes. knock on wood, in Rome. It'll be much hotter than May, but I think we'll survive. Will be wonderful uh, to see you in Rome, yes. and uh, yes, in summer, definitely that will be. I think I will keep you informed all about the dates and uh, regarding the exhibition. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. For, yes. Take uh, care. Wonderful conversation. Yes. And evening and take care of yourself and uh, keep me posted about the art. Yes. Thank okay. you so much, Nicole. Okay. All the best. Bye, Art Bye. Talk. Bye. 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 Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Armenian artist Arshak Sarkisian. Uh, Look forward to hearing more about his work over the next few months as he launches his exhibition in Rome and hopefully soon in other galleries and biennales across the world. Have a great week and take care. Bye.